my question was chapter eight, question one, which states describe or diagram the relationship between catabolic pathways, anabolic pathways, and the ATP ADP cycle. Uh, include in your answer an explanation of the role of each of these plays in the metabolism of the cell. So metabolism is kind of the umbrella term for all of the metabolic processes that happen within the cell and the body. So there's catabolism and there's anabolism. Catabolism is usually hydrolytic, which means that it breaks bonds by the use of water. It breaks down molecules and it releases energy. It releases more energy than it needs to create the re uh, to undergo the reaction, so it's considered an exergonic reaction. Now, anabolism uses dehydration synthesis, so it's going to take that water out of the equation, be able to the bonds to form with each other again, and it builds new substances and it uses more energy than it releases, which makes it an endergonic reaction. So, a little background on ATP. ATP is adenine triphosphate. And I wrote it like this because within the cycle, ADP, uh, the phosphate group, the, ther the terminal phosphate group, and energy. So adenine diphosphate is the product of taking this terminal pho uh, phosphate group away from ATP. And that exchange between these two phosphate groups is what makes the cycle capable. So here's a little diagram right here. There's energy in the middle because that's what um, fuels the whole cycle. So you, to be able to get from a complex molecule to a simple molecule, you need to undergo a, a catabolic pathway or reaction. During one of these reactions, ADP is turned back into ATP because again, it's an exergonic reaction. Now to be able to get a simple molecule back into a complex molecule, molecule you're gonna have to have that dehydration synthesis that's involved in the anabolic pathway. Um, ATP is turned back into ADP. So you can see how this all kind of connects here within the diagram. And my outside source um, described this kind of cycle as a balancing act. So to be able to keep equilibrium constant within the body, um, metabolism is balanced between the catabolic reactions and the anabolic the anabolic reactions and this little symbol here represents that they're interchangeable uh, through the process of ATP and ADP. Now without these process there's some things that would be detrimental to the process which would be CO2 and H2O. H2O are usually products of catabolism and without those various cellular functions would be hindered by the loss of this. And this is also what breaks down your um, your sugars within the cell, which are essential for protein synthesis. Now, advanced molecules wouldn't be able to be um, put together from within the body rather than getting them from outside the body, such as polysaccharides, like you know your um, your sucrose, your galactose, your lactose. All of that would not be possible without anabolism. And cellular respiration. So ATP and ADP are very big, very, very big players within the Krebs cycle and the glycolysis kind of chain within the cell. And without cellular respiration, it would basically, the cell would not be able to function. So as a helpful tip, you can kind of think of this as a kind of a yin and yang situation here. Um, it maintains homeostasis with the constant interchanging of the ATP between the anabolic um, reactions and the catabolic reactions.